Remote working is happening everywhere right now and with different challenges arising for different businesses, we spoke to James Milligan from Hayes to see how that international business is coping with remote working, how he himself as the father of three is coping with remote working and also how these challenges might lead to new experiences in the future. What are some of the biggest challenges facing teams that have gone fully remote during this pandemic? I suppose also, although some people within a team may have worked remotely before or at different times, to have the entire workforce working remotely is really, really unusual. Um, even, if, even if you look at Google, right, and they had to test to make sure that their systems would stand up for everybody working from home before, before, before the shutdown. Um, so there's lots of different challenges that people won't have faced before. Um, and, and I think one of those biggest challenges is around the technology and the infra, infra, infrastructure to have in place around remote work and scale. So as I said, um, you know, you might have 10 or 20% of your workforce working remotely at any one time. And you, you know, you, you might have the infra infrastructure that comfortably supports that. Um, but then to have everybody all go in a very short period at the same time, but that, that, that simply isn't a scenario that most companies have ever had to, had to plan for. Um, and as a result, you know, lots of people in a very short period of time have to mobilize um, their IT teams to, to get that infrastructure up and running or utilize third parties to enable remote working. Um, I find, I'm finding personally that doing, uh, doing daily calls with my direct reports and then weekly calls with sort of the, the broader leadership is a good way of, of having the right level of communication without um, being overbearing um, with, with the individuals, but at the same time understanding what's going on within the business. And, and you have to remember that some people, you know, um, will thrive from working from home, right? Um, some people have been pushing for this for a long time. Maybe their organizations haven't um, culturally or, or, or from an infrastructure point of view been able to facilitate this and they see this as a, 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 as a, a massive opportunity to, to, pr to prove that you, know, you can remain productive um, working from home. But there's other people that, you know, they may well feel isolated. They enjoy that office environment. They, they enjoy the, the, social, um, the social touch points that you have. Um, and you need to, need to be cognizant and tuned into those. As an international business, Hayes must be facing some of these challenges uh, itself. Um, what are some of the ways that you're tackling the issue? Um, first thing was getting infrastructure sorted out. We're lucky we're a big multinational. We largely had that in place. Business is not going to be the, the, the same again. Um, uh, I was speaking to one of my colleagues earlier, but she was saying this, this could be akin to you know, Second World War, uh, First World War, um, women going into manufacturing for the first time, you see a big shift in the workforce. And it could be the same with the remote use of you know, technology, you know, and we're going to come out the other side of this um, with a completely different perspective um, on, on, on what work, work is like and how work can be done. That's a really good point. And then kind of on the personal side, how have you been managing? You're probably a bit used to remote working, but in this case, when it's everybody and it's more enforced than it is optional, how have you found it? So I am used to remote working um, in many ways because I, I look after teams across the UK and Europe. Um, so a, a lot of what we do is, is you know, via video. What I'm not used to having is uh, three little people running around um, uh, and my wife being at home at the same time when I'm working remotely or even if I'm doing video conferences from, from the office. And that's, that's the biggest challenge is, is, um, is trying to manage my wife's very pressurised full-time role, which, you know, which, which is very busy at the moment. Um, uh, my role, which again is very busy, and keeping a seven-year-old, a five-year-old, and a two-year-old um, entertained. Um, I think routine's important. Um, we've been doing uh, Joe's uh, exercise classes at nine o'clock in the morning, um, and, and we've enjoyed that. Um, largely, you know, my wife is trying to do her telephone calls in the morning, um, and I'm trying to do some more of the sort of administrative um, reading, you know, uh, taking in and consuming information in the morning and then in the afternoons, um, more of the face-to-face the -face, uh, type work. But both of us are working sort of pre-breakfast and, and in the evening in order to get everything done. Uh, just trying to get the balance right between a learning, fun and exercise. So I know most businesses will have spent a couple of weeks maybe working from home. Do you feel that uh, the atmosphere is changing a bit and people have settled into this, this new normal? It's probably, we're probably in a position where we've seen a drop in productivity across businesses as they, as they, they come to work from home. They, they've dealt with the immediate issues um, that that presents. Uh, and now businesses are starting to look at, I'm not gonna say business as usual, but looking at this window and how they can use it constructively 
to be well positioned um, when, when, when we come out the other end of this. You kind of touched on this before, but after all this is over, um, businesses might see that there are different opportunities that open up because of this great experiment that we're all part of. Will there be new challenges that arise out of that? I think it depends on how people apply themselves and perform during this window, right? There's an element of building trust and, and showing that certain jobs that maybe traditionally people thought that couldn't be done remotely, that had to be done in the office, that had to be team-based, um, can actually be done uh, remotely as part of a team. And, and I think there will be a lot of evidence to support that, right? Um, uh, and yes, it's going to present new um, challenges to, to employers, but I think employers will be more open than they've ever been to responding to those challenges, especially when they've seen how effective um, you know, remote working can be. I think there's going to be a balance for everyone. I don't, you know, I think there's very few people um, that would want to be working remotely 100% of the time. Uh, I think most most human beings crave some level of interaction. But there's also the, the, the you know, there's also the, the 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 piece around getting into a car or onto a train or or onto a plane and going to where you need to be and coming back and all of that time that can be utilised much more um, productively. Um, and again, employers will see that as well. So I definitely think we are, we are we're at a tipping point here. And I definitely think, you know, um, most employers will offer some degree of flexibility when we return to a normal working environment. Um, and in industries beyond just technology where it's quite well established at the moment, it will be in other, other professional services sectors as well. I think, you know, it's going to permeate and, uh, and, and the whole world, we're going to see a bit of, bit of a shift. I mean, I've, I'm, I've seen jobs that have been advertised where they're saying that vacation isn't an issue, more so. Um, at the moment, you know, um, uh, both from a contract and a permanent point of view. Uh, and I think that's just sort of reflects the, the shift in mindset.